In August, I named him my favorite coach uh, heading into this season. So he's got a, a lot of pressure on him, not just because Joe Burrow's gone, because he is, in fact, that man. 12 seasons as an NFL coach, named, um, let, let's see, fifth season as defensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals, the pride of Staten Island, New York. Um, mad scientist Lou Anarumo, how are you? I'm doing great. How about you guys? I'm so excited to talk to you. Same here. Uh, we got a big game. We'll get to that or whatever. Last night, I'm looking at this. 76 points between the Cowboys and Seahawks. Zero punts. As fans, I watch a game like this, and I'm loving every second. It's like uh, explosive. It's fireworks. What kind of a nightmare is this for you as far as a uh, box score? I mean, I'm cringing every time there's another, <laughs> you know, 20-yard explosive play. Every other, every other run is long, and it's like, all right, I get it. Everybody likes this stuff, but not as a D.C., that's for sure. Uh, unlike some DCs who kind of stick to their system, their you know their style of play, no matter who the opponent is, you're sort of known for being a mad scientist. DJ Reader literally called you that. You're brilliant when the X's and O's come into play, and I personally think that you adapt to the, what's in front of you and the game plan for each individual opponent. We've seen you do this with the Chiefs, with the Bills, of course. What's sort of the secret behind? And you know, you're not going to tell me, but like, what goes behind the game planning that sort of leads to giving those top offenses fits? Uh, I mean, I think what it is, it's just a real, uh, we got a great staff, you know, mm. we've got great players that can learn the stuff that we do. And we just, like a lot of guys, we just try to take away what they do best and try to uh, make them play a little bit left-handed and not give the quarterback the same look, uh, you know, on a consistent basis. And I think I've, I've got a DB background. I've coached DBs for a long time. And, you know, you got to affect the quarterback, especially the great ones. And that's what we try to do. I mean, how much is on the players? You mentioned them, but give them some love. Like, you need the right kind of players and the type of players to pull it off, right? 100%, and it's a, a ton on them. And, and, you know, I'm not out there tackling or running or trying to knock down balls, thank God. So uh, we, we've got smart players. We've got guys that are super talented, and, you know, they're able to take advantage. And, and you know, we try to tell them the whys. We try to tell them, hey, this is why we're doing this. This is why I'm going to call that, not just – hey, make sure you do this on this particular call. Uh, give them the ins and outs of it. And uh, our guys love that. And, and um, you know, we've, we've done well when we played those type of guys. I was watching um, Deron Bland last night, and obviously they're so aggressive, and Diggs was like the same sort of aggressiveness. And I'm like, DQ, must, that, they must be scouting for that. Like, they must be coaching that. And that you can only really do that when you know, you know, that the DAC and you have faith that he's going to go down and score every time. So, like, I've heard DCs like Steve Spagnuolo talk about how having, uh, you know, a, a capable or, like Joe Burrow, brilliant quarterback on the other side sort of, like, gives them the luxury of being more aggressive. So having Joe on the other side obviously affects how you call your defense. What is the biggest change in your defense since losing him? I just think that, you know, we've got to uh, tighten up everything and just realize we're going to try to give our uh, try to give Jake and the, and the offense as good a field position as we can. We're always trying to do that. I, I just think, you know, when you get a guy that's coming in for the first time, you want to try to make the give him some short fields and takeaways. We've done a really good job with that this year. And I think in order to get uh, to win these games that are coming up, we've got to continue that and uh, allow him to do that. So, you know, we're going to take uh, calculated risks in the back end, you know, knowing when they have help. And uh, I think you you mentioned Deron Bland, who's done an unbelievable job uh, taking the ball away and scoring. You know, we had one last week where DJ Turner picked the ball up yeah. and, uh, you know, we were all screaming, score, score, score. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see how that goes. But it's certainly in the back of our minds for sure. Coach, what is that? Why do you have a sign in the back of that says your name on it like that? What is that sign? That little, oh, the, on the right? Yeah. Um, that's from the Super Bowl. Oh, so, I love it. Yeah, it was in my locker in the Super Bowl, so I keep it right up there just uh, just to remind me. Yeah, just to remind you, just so we can get back there. Listen, people have moved on from this Bengals team. Let's just get into it. People are like, oh, the season's over. And, and it might be. It might be. That's the noise outside. But I look at it, and I'm like, y'all are just one game back. The sky yeah. is falling on Twitter. What is the sky like inside that building? Well, that's the great thing about the culture we've built here in Zach. And uh, we've we got guys that just don't flinch. Uh, the year we went to the Super Bowl, we were seven and six. We had just lost to the Chargers. And, 
you know, we rally and win uh, key games. So, uh, you know, I just think the, the the makeup of the guys that we have, the coaches that we have, we're not going to flinch. We're going to keep going forward. And, you know, we're not the hot topic right now. And that's just how things are these days. And uh, but we'll just we'll just keep going about our business. And, uh, you know, we're, we had a heck of a practice yesterday and uh, hopefully we'll we'll show well on Monday night. And there was a lot of talk, and you know, Twitter sort of the gauge of everything. Uh, and Jesse Bates is killing it. I'm sure that brings a little bit of a tear to your eye watching him with these amazing plays and, and, and a great player. But let's be honest here. There was talk about your defense not being able to do anything without Bates or Von Bell. And then you've got these young cats that you're coaching up, like Cam Taylor Britt, who's having a breakout season. Like, how incredible is he? Well, I think yeah, Cam's done a great job taking the ball away. You know, first of all, uh, you know, great play there by Jesse. Uh, you know, <laughs> let's see it again. I, I saw that on the on the, and I saw it the other day, and I went back and watched it, and and yeah, we're happy for Jesse, happy for Vaughn. You know, we've got some good young players here um, that they're only going to get better with time. Did you teach you know, him this? I, I, I hundred percent. Just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> what did you teach him on this play? Just don't don't drop it, catch it, and run. <laughs> Um, but no, our guys, will, it'll pay dividends. You know, Jesse certainly wasn't the same player uh, his first year that he is now. And, you know, experience will help all these guys as we go forward. Joe's in the building. Like, where's Joe right now? <laughs> it's so funny you asked that question. He's such a football junkie that, you know, he sat in on the – uh, he's sitting in on defensive meetings just to see how that stuff goes. And so he can pick up. He was in our third down install meeting this morning on defense. He's interacting <laughs> with the players. Yeah, he's he's one of a kind, that's for sure. Is he a dream for Jake Browning? I know he was – I saw him at practice sort of standing by him. Like, I can't imagine that even just the osmosis isn't a great thing. I would I would imagine that, uh, you know, that whatever Joe's given him and seeing things from a different perspective, it can only help Jake. You know, uh, you know, the coaches are great, but, you know, to have a guy that uh, has done it at such a high level, I mean, that's got to be a great resource for Jake. Coach, you know, Joe, you know, Joe in a very special way, like you go up against him. Obviously, you see him around that building. He's sitting in your defensive meetings. That's absolutely bananas. What sort of has been the most impressive part or what stood out to you about how he's handled this adversity? The wrist and you had the other injuries, the calf, all of it. He never another guy that really, truly never flinches. You, you would never know. His look on his face is the same as, you know, getting ready to uh, play the Rams in the Super Bowl or he just got off surgery he's sitting in his locker and we're having a conversation yesterday. He's always the same. I think it's a great trait to have, especially at his position uh, with all the stress and all the uh, stuff that's on his shoulders. The guy never, never, never flinches. You'd never know that his heart was uh, ticking at a rate that it is, I'm sure, at certain points. Uh, uh, you know, I'm fascinated by him in that regard on how well he's able to handle these, these uh, things that are thrown at him. Does he talk in the defensive meeting or does he just sit in the corner? No, he, 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 I asked him a question. He responded today very well and he made it very uh, profound like, hey, I would do this against that. And uh, I, I didn't expect uh, anything else from him. He was, uh, he was terrific this morning. Take that, Trevor Lawrence. See you Monday night. Big game in Jacksonville. It really is a big game. It's Monday night football. Big spot for you, of course, because you're really going to have to shoulder, uh, you know, the loss of Joe Burrow and do your thing out there, which you will. Uh, this Jags team has not played on Monday night football since 2011. And I don't know if you're on Twitter, but everyone's sharing. It's a big deal. It's been a long time. Uh, they're all sharing photos of them from 2011, like people on the team and just, you know, Jags fans on Twitter. We found a photo of you from 2011 oh, no. where you were coaching at Purdue. What does this photo bring to mind? Uh, wow, that's a long <laughs> time ago. <laughs> um, just the great days at Purdue. We had some great players there. Joe Tiller is our uh, head coach, was great. I learned a lot from him. Um, you know, recruiting I didn't love, so, uh, <laughs> so some good and some bad things, but that's funny. Coach, is it true that you had Raheem Mostert on your on your squad? Good old Raheem. Yeah, we, uh, we were, uh, I think uh, Gary Nord recruited him. We had him on our team, and uh, uh, Ryan Kerrigan was there at the time. We had some really good players. It was, uh, it was a good group. Let's get into Coach Lou here, because you think that was a long time ago. We actually didn't stop there. We never do. We dug a little bit deeper, Lou, and we found this doozy. I mean, you're a stud. This is you. Ah, you're such a stud. This is you in Staten Island, quarterback in your high school team. You went to Wagner to play quarterback. How did you go from this fresh-faced quarterback to defensive mastermind? What happened? I mean, what are we doing with that? <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, look at look at that. Good old the Wagner Falcons right there. This will make all my high school guys proud. My high school coach, who I still talk to all the time, he'll be proud too to see the Falcons up on the uh, on the screen. Um, I, you know, I never could get away from it. I tried to do. I tried to. I tried. You know, went to college and thought I would do some things, and then I just. I always went back to, to the high school uh, to try to help out. And um, for it, before you know it, I was GA and at Syracuse and kind of the rest is history from there. But how'd that you get to, was, how'd you get to the defensive side of the ball? Um, that's the, it's funny. Uh, that was the GA position that was um, available at Syracuse. So if, if oh. they would have had a quarterback job, I, would, I guess I would be a quarterback, you know, guy today, but uh, that was the job. And I, and I, and then once you, once you're in that kind of, mode i didn't want to change uh, i just felt okay i had a good experience of learning the offensive stuff and now you know with the defensive uh background that i have so it, it helped uh, over the years for sure so when i look at this photo and you're a staten island guy your name's luana like you got the whole italian fat i gotta ask you about tommy devito that's all i gotta ask you he's a jersey kid so not to be confused with staten island that's very touchy um i mean w this this thing that he does with his hand he said there's no there's no word for it there's no definition what what is what is that how does luana rumo de define that move yeah when i when i see that i i, I think of like forget about it you know <laughs> be like you know forget about it forget forget about it means a lot of different things to uh people from that area so i i kind of i think that but uh, it's great that he's doing well and uh you know it's, i can't imagine growing up in that area being a giant fan and then actually being the quarterback that must be uh, something special for him and his family yeah he's from new jersey a few miles from metlife stadium and clearly making a proud italian uh coach lou proud out there with tommy devito forget about it okay game against the jags let's get into it zach taylor uh press taylor Okay, so there's a little, there's a little some, something cooking there at least. Um, what has been the, the talk in the building? Like, do you take Zach and sit him down and say, tell me everything about press? What do I need to know? How does that go? Yeah, well, Zach and I get together a lot, uh, whether it's uh, against his brother or not. So, um, you know, uh, there's the, we're, we're, we have conversations throughout the week about different blitzes, different coverages, and um, so, you know, while he'll share information, he's certainly not holding back uh, anything, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but uh, no, it's been nothing. It's been a normal week as far as that goes. You know, uh, you know, I watch the tape and see how he is as a play caller, uh, press that is. And, um, and I, if I had a question, I'd, I'd certainly go ask Zach. But, uh, uh, you know, no further than that. I think it'll be uh, it'll be. Really interesting. I'll see those guys pregame, so it'll be fun to see him. Coach, I feel like you're so. lying. I feel like there has to be a little <laughs> more. Is that maybe you're not going to Zach, but is Zach sort of stopping by your office a couple extra times this week? Like, you good? You got it? You have it? Good. We got to get press. There's got to be a little something, a little something extra. I don't know. You know, I just think it is what it is on this one. <laughs> Okay, I love that. So you're game planning against Trevor Lawrence this week. You've heard from a bunch of um, opposing defenders like Nick Bosa. Um, I can't remember who else right now. Oh, Arden Key, that he's sort of like a one-read quarterback. That's the, the phrase that they use. Do you think that's a fair assessment, or are they underestimating Trevor Lawrence? No, I think that's a little bit of an underestimation in my view. I mean, I see the guy work full field reads and, you know, get the ball out on time. I, I just think what happens with him is he's such a great athlete that if there is a opportunity for, for him to run and there's not great rush lanes, then he takes it, which I don't mm. I don't fault him on at all. So, you know, watch what he can do with his legs. But, no, I, I've seen him make the, the reads, and uh, we have great respect for him. His, his arm is uh, really, really strong. He can make all the throws. And as I mentioned, he's a terrific athlete. Which quarterback that you've planned for this season sort of surprised you the most, good or bad? Or who, like, popped off? Or you're like, oh, okay. Uh, I think, you know, I would uh, be crazy if I didn't say C.J. Stroud. I, I thought, you know, his, you know, he did well against us. And I wasn't really surprised. I just, I, what I was surprised about was how calm he was during the game. You know, it, he kind of came across as a, a veteran guy that had been there, seen that and done it. So, uh, you know, his future is bright for sure. I, I was thoroughly impressed. I love seeing that because their head coach is a defensive minded guy. And D'Amico Ryans. <laughs> so let's get to this portion of the program because because it's got to be nice to see uh, in this world where people want offensive-minded guys and whatever. Like, no, like there's there's a this is time to bring sexiness back to the defensive-minded head coach, starting with D'Amico Ryans and 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 maybe you, coach, because I'll tell you this: I have 
I have been so endeared to and, and embraced mm. by the Cincinnati Bengals fan base, and they have never been more angry with me than when I said, y'all got to get ready for life after Lou. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's nice of you. I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, I, I, I just think right now, you know, as you, as you know, I'm, we're focused and of I'm course. focused on what's going on here and, and trying to win every game we can. We got such a great group, group of guys and I would never want to let them down. And it's the feeling is the same way. Uh, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say certainly that stuff is on the back of my mind and uh, having gone through the process the last couple of years, I'm hoping after the season I'll get an opportunity. Um, I, <laughs> we're all doing this in studio. <laughs> We're all doing this in studio. I told DJ Reader that he, they have to stop hyping you up because they all they adore you. They love you. And there is something to being, you know, you're not just the brilliant X's and O's, but you can lead a team. Players love you. What is the secret to getting these guys uh, going, just, getting them motivated when maybe the chips are down, especially like right now? Like right now you were proving why you should be head coach. Yeah, I, I think that it starts, I learned a long time ago, I, I just think it starts with the relationship and the trust between each player and uh, and the coach. And if you can build trust, not just on the field, but off the field as well, when they know you that you truly care about them as a person, um, you know, these guys will run through a wall for you. And don't, don't lie to them. Tell them the truth, mm. even if the truth hurts. We all don't want to be uncomfortable and you got to be comfortable having the uncomfortable conversations. And when you can do that as a coach, the players will respect you even more. If you just sugarcoat everything so that everything's always, you know, copacetic, then that's where they know you're full of you know what. So uh, to me, I try to keep it straight. I never I never lead them down the path that's not the truth mm. and uh, let them know that I care about them because I, I do. And, and that's just how I've, I've been brought up. And. Uh, that comes across in everything I do with our guys. And, you know, I love them and, and uh, if the feelings mutual. I know and we, we just want to go out here and do a great job one game at a time and see where we end up. Uh, I just love the And you had a bunch of maniacs on your team. DJ, I mean, Trey Hendrickson is ridiculous. Yeah, Trey. <laughs> Trey, is, Trey is something, man. I'm, I'm uh, so happy that he is a part of our team. Uh, when he crosses that line on Sunday, he flips a switch and he's a different human. Uh, he's, he's built the rush quarterbacks and he was born to do that for sure. And DJ and, uh, you know, BJ Hill and Sam Hubbard and, you know, Logan and Jermaine inside all, all the guys that we have have really done a terrific job. Mike Hilton in the backhand. Yeah. I'm getting killed coach saying, no, no, no. Coach Lou can't go. Coach Lou can't <laughs> a lot of that. But then there's a lot of, he'll eventually be head coach somewhere. Now. I'm like eventually y'all, y'all need to just face reality. Like you said, to be honest, like this, this fan base has got to get ready for you to get all of the love. And people are also saying D'Amico Ryan's Antonio Pierce, defensive minded coaches are doing their thing. Cause I don't, I mean, I think there's, there's more than room for that. It's working. Look at the Texans. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, you know, I, and I just think at the end of the day, the the leader of the team uh, has to ha will be an offensive guy, defensive guy, whatever it is. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you better be able to stand up in front of the team, and uh, they need to know that you have full command of the room and how you convey that message and how you move the team. Uh, whether you're offensive or defensive, if you don't have that skill, I think um, you know it's it's it'll be tough. But um, you know. That's how I've always been, and and that's uh, worked for me. And then you got to focus on Monday's game in Jacksonville, big one. You guys are a game back. Go crush it, make it happen. You're the best. I'm so we'll happy. Thank, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's been great. And now after and this, Christian Kirk's going to tell me that he wants to score two touchdowns on you. Get about it over here. Get about it. Forget about it, Christian Kirk. Joe Hayden on the show after this. We appreciate you, Coach. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adam.